Why do you go at so hard? Hand out tracks, go out in the street all the time. That's why. He told you to do it, but there should be a little bit of heart behind it where you start to see people as people and not just as trees. You know, you cut down the tree, make it into a piece of furniture or whatever it might be, or burn it. In a, you actually see them as, as people. Sometimes it does take a second, second touch from Jesus Christ to make you realize that they have a soul. And thank you for saving mine. So a girl walked by us last night. Haley and I were on the other corner, and Taylor and uh, Justin and Paul were over there talking about Nintendo or some crazy thing they were doing over there. Man. But uh, uh, this girl walked by Haley and I with the, the pink purse, I think it was. And she was she cackling a little bit? She had a little mini cackle going. So she has a pink purse, all kidding aside. I mean, like, pink, pink. Not as pink as Kenny Sure, but pink in that regard, man. <laughs> she had a black pentagram and beads on the front of it. And I'm not talking the point up here. I'm talking the ears, the cheek, and the chin. That's why they do it like that. It's, it's the goat head. It's Yoda. It's the ears. It's what it is. It's the ears and the cheek, the jowls, and the, and the chin. And she had them like, and the other girl was with her just kept staring at the heaven and hell sign with like a smirk. I'm like, do you understand the devil that deceived them was cast in a lake of fire in brimstone? Where the beast and the false power run should be tormented. If you follow that fool, you've bought his lies, you will join him. Man. Man. Unbelievable. But keep witnessing to him. What are you going to do? Are you going to quit because they say no to you? Actually, you know what? Do this real quick. Uh, go to, uh, show you something neat before we get into it tonight. Go to Acts. Go to Acts. I don't like to preach much, but sometimes, you know, you get a little interested in doing this thing, you know? Oh, <laughs> uh, I want to do. Um, there's a, hmm. I'm looking for the place. I think it's 14. No, you know what? Um, go, to, go to 28. Go to 28. Acts 28, please. Go to Acts 28. Just so I'll read one verse and we'll get into the questions. Verse 24 says this. Actually, uh, I'm sorry, 23. And when they had appointed him a day, that's the Apostle Paul, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded, testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. What are you going to do? You're going to go out there because they don't believe you? That, I would say the Apostle Paul is a pretty good preacher. Yeah, he caused the guy to fall asleep up in the upper deck, man. That's okay, and he fell out. But you know what? Who, I'm, what did they do to Jesus Christ? What are they going to do to you and I? All you can do is plant and water and watch God give the increase and pray for him. And try not to get crispy when you're out there. I told you, that's, that, that's, a, that's a hard thing for me, man. Get that self-righteous attitude. Well, I'm saved. I, don't, I, I pretend I care, but I really don't. That's, that's a hard thing. So, All right, how many... How many are the years, the days of the years of our life? On average, from a King James Bible, not, not obviously not in Genesis, and, but according specifically to the book of Psalms, what is the span of our life? I saw Deb, and I got, I got a bunch of wiggles over here, so I got to go with a... Go ahead. I was thinking three, four, and ten. You were thinking, Mrs. Cogshaw, or you were... You're, I'm on it. <laughs> you have you have half credit. What's the rest of it, Jen? <laughs> Three score and ten is hundred. That's correct. The first part of it. 
Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. Haley, you got it? <laughs> you don't have to worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> go to, go to, go to, go ahead, brother. Okay, does anybody else have it before I go to? Brother Burt, what's the, what's the, Deb got the first half of it. What's the rest of it? Uh, Psalm 90, verse 10. Okay, go to Psalm 90, verses, if you could read verse number 9, Brother Burt, if I can tax you a little bit tonight. Can you go 9 and 10? For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale. There you go. There you go. Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. Yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. Mm -hmm. But it's soon cut off and we fly away. I, I know the old man guy. You could see a difference between when he was 72 and 75. You say, or, you know, even before he hit 70, then as he started to get towards, I think he died at 77. But I mean, you could see the body in that six, seven years in the 70s. It started to get weaker. There's not a lot of 80 years old moving around, but 70 you can still kind of get by, but what's the median age still now for people? It's still like 73, right? So God's still right. I, some of the guys who work are like, oh, people are living above 90. I'm like, what about all the people that die before they hit two? Yeah. It's still the median age is still what? The, the early 70s, right? Mid-70s, max? The only reason I can make the numbers look higher is because you have less, lower infant mortality that brings up the average Right. Right. The oldest person that I think ever lived, according to the Gansler Book of Records, was like 136 or 138. Compared to Methuselah, you're like a kid. You're like, Methuselah's holding you in, her, in his arms. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, seriously. But yeah, you, you, got, you got 70, 80 years. I'm 56. That means I have 14 left. Isn't that weird? You think about that, man. Middle age is 40. No, it's not. It's about 35. 40, maybe. And then it's sorrow and travail and all that. Pretty wild stuff, man. I know sin can take you either way. Some folks live... I, I, I get it. Uh, Haley, not obeying her parents, going to die at 30, <laughs> at 30 in October. All right. I, I, need, I, need to know, I need to know what... I need to know what war... What war there is no discharge from... Oh, this is a great one, man. you got to know this one, man. What war is there in the King James Bible that there's, you just you can't get out of it? It's not probably, you're not, not Ephesians 6. That wouldn't be a bad answer. That wouldn't be a bad answer. But the, word, the reason why I use the word discharge is specific. It's a, it's a great Bible verse, man. Justin, you're, 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 you're yeah, you, I think you're searching through doing the Ouija board with the fingers, man, trying to get the reading, man. Does anybody know what the, there is, the war there's no discharge from? What's that? Haley, go ahead and say it. Okay, the, the flesh, okay. You'll have war with Amalek. That's not, it's not, a, it's not a bad guess. It's a B minus. Bert, I know where you're at, man. It, if you do not, go ahead. Look, are you looking discharge? If you look discharge up, you got it. If you look discharge up. It is. You're, you're, you got it, Haley? Oh, well, well, go ahead. There you go. Megan. It's the only time that discharge is used in the Bible, just have a note. <laughs> <laughs> we have a little prophetess over there. Yeah, man, wow. Wow, it's a hostile takeover, man. Is this going to shock you to know that I'm aware of that? I go through and try to find the ver words that are only used once, man. Yeah. Discharge, success, unfaithful. Oh, yeah, man. Ag you. <laughs> All right, Megan, you're up. Ecclesiastes 8.8. 8. <laughs> oh, we want to be cool, but we don't want to be rude. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ecclesiastes. Well, isn't that interesting? Jesus Christ. Father, into thy hands I do what? He's the man that can discharge the spirit. 
because there's no wickedness in him. Imagine being able to die when you wanted to on your own terms. Like Brother Bert said on Sunday, and we've heard it from other people, Jesus Christ is not going out like a punk on that cross. He's in one. He's quoting Bible verses. I don't quote Bible verses when I have a fever. <laughs> he's hanging on a cross, parts of thirst beating to a pulp. He's like, uh, I thirst. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Any. <laughs> Oh, yeah, bone of pre- Yeah, I got that. That's Psalm 34, 20. Uh, oh, yeah, Psalm 22. Father, is that, is that we got them all covered? Into thy hands I commit my spirit. With a loud voice. With a loud voice. Like a nice lion who roars. According to, well, like a lion. That's Psalm 22. How far are they from the words of my roaring? That's a lamb and a lion dying on that cross, man. I need... For you guys to tell me, what is the light of the body? What's the light of the body? There's a hint right there. What's the light? Well, Paul, I need some Bible, kid. You're at the judgment. You're at the judgment seat. Uh, hold on. <laughs> wow. You, you that. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Judgment seat of Christ, Megan, did you bring your concordance? Yeah, I, was, I, was, I was thinking you took it out of my head. Jesus knows it's going to be open. <laughs> 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 you can't make conversation. You know, you know what? It's open book down here. Probably be a closed book up there, man. Oh. All the books are open. Well, you might be going to the great white throne. I'm not. <laughs> Don't ever come at the best. Oh, he's got him now. Never. <laughs> when I'm wrong, I'm right. I'll fight you. No. <laughs> That's it, man. That's hilarious, man. Paul, you got it. We gave you all that laughter to hope you're, to hide your tears. Are you finding it? You got it, kid. All right. Does anybody have the reference? <laughs> all right. Let me get. Let me give them both to you. Go to Matthew six, please. Matthew six. Matthew six. Jonathan, I'll pull you back in the fold. Here you go. Matthew 6.22, if you could, please. Matthew 6.22. The light of the body is the eye. Amen. If therefore the eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Okay, here's your concordant verse. Go to Luke 11.34. This is your match meet. If you could, Brother Jonathan, Luke 11.34. <laughs> I don't want to stretch out or nothing, man. <laughs> oh, I, I'm with you, man. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. When thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of light. Amen. That's where being single is barren having a double. You don't want to be double minded, but you want your eye single, single minded, all that stuff. So, anyway, all right, I need some verses on witness. Witnesseth, witnessing, or witnessed. Not how to, but that word used in that different tense. And there's, there's a ton of them. Go ahead, Brother Burke. Uh, 1 John 5 7. Okay, 1 John 5 7. Go ahead, fire away if you got it. Well, there are three that are record in heaven the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. And okay. There you go. Might as well throw in verse number nine as or like you're at a yard sale. Go ahead. Uh, if we receive the witness of men, the witness of God is Bingo. This is the witness of God, which he had testified of his son. Amen. You took three right off the board, man. Sweet. Brother Paul, and then Taylor, and then Jonathan. Uh, Matthew 26, 59, Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Now the chief priest and all the There you go. Amen. So no, that I mean, there's a bunch, but that's false witnesses, man. All right, Taylor, and then Jonathan, go ahead. Second Corinthians thirteen one. Mm-hmm. This is the third time I am coming. The mouth of two. Yep. Mouth of two or three shall I ever be Amen. Jonathan, go ahead. Fire away. John one six. Mm-hmm. 
Go ahead. There was a man sent from God. Mm-hmm. John, the same came for witness, to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighted every man that comes into the world. Amen. John the Baptist, greatest preacher, born of a woman, and guess what? What's he do? I just, I'm just here to bear witness. So I have, let's go ask Diana. We'll go over and then, then we'll go over that site. Go ahead. Revelation 11.3. Mm, the two witnesses there. Go ahead. Amen. Phenomenal. That's uh, Enoch and Elijah, right? Yeah. Wrong. Hebrews 9.27, brother. Oh. we got to get off the ledge. Go ahead, Brother Justin, fire away. Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. These six things that the Lord hate, uh, ye seven and a buffer abomination unto him, a proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift and run into mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that spoke discord among brethren. Yeah. Haley, then Jennifer. Hebrews 12, 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are... Compass the cloud of witnesses. Yeah, man. Amen. Those aren't people looking over the banisters of heaven. That's your witnesses from chapter 11. The folks that had faith and faith and works. The chapter of faith and works. That'll ruin, that'll ruin everybody's life. Okay, I have Jennifer and then... I have Mo, and then I have Deb. Mo, don't be shaking at me like that. It gets angry. Go ahead. Go. <gasps> That's just not cool, man. No. <laughs> Incomplete. Go ahead. Amen. All right. So First John is being taken on my Bible five, and I'm taking that song. I'm on the winning or the other one we sung. All I had to say, those are gone. Those are those. Are, go. Hey, yeah, go. I need Deb and then Melissa. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, Genesis thirty-one forty-seven. Yeah. That I'd rather go with Galid, because Jigar Sehadutha. It's pretty rough, man. Just call it Galid, man. Come on, what's wrong with you anyway? <laughs> that's hilarious, man. Wow. Deb, that's a great poll right there. That's why I like you. That's a good poll right <laughs> Melissa, go ahead. Uh, Titus 1. <gasps> this witness is true. Mm-hmm. You just want to read that extra one and get a little more pulpit time, huh? <laughs> That's a good one. This witness, witness is true. Evil be liars and slow bellies. Can't you just see on the front porch a, a cat? It's right just sitting over a belly full, man. Sun. What a great term. Slow bellies. All right. I am down to. James, you got one randomly? No. It's all right, man. Yeah, false witness would take me back into Proverbs 14, 25, 14, 4, and a few other places. Thou shalt not bear fault with Exodus 20, and a few other places. But I, false witness? He's a false prophet, and the beast, yeah, you're correct. But I don't, if, I don't, is it a false witness? That's a great question. It's not coming to me, Kenny, but go ahead. You got another one? That's a good one. Faithful witness, Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. Go, go, to, go to Proverbs 14. I'll show you one real quick. Megan, you got one? With the magic handy dandy? I mean, I mean yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's do, let's do 1425 before, before you read the whole column. 
1425. Kenny, go ahead. 1425, that's my gift to you. A true witness delivereth souls, but a deceitful witness lies. If you back that up with verse number five. Yep. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. Now, isn't that interesting? 1425, he says, a faithful witness delivereth souls. What do Jehovah's Witnesses not believe in? They're not going to deliver your soul. It's annihilation. Yes, I see the face. They don't, they'll, they'll get to the point where you're ultimately annihilated, but there is no hell. There is a general resurrection. Um, their whole gig is when you... I'll just give you the quick story. Herb Cox, Shaw and I were walking down, and I think it was Plainville or Farmington, one of those, and this old lady opened the door. And she goes, no, I'm a Jehovah's Witness. I said, well, this, it's about time it was turned about as fair play. I get to knock your door for once. And she started laughing. And her grandson was there. And this, this is the lady that said she heard uh, one of those two preach, either Tazy Russell or Judge Rutherford, whichever one was after the other. I think Tazy Russell was the older one. He died. But just, she was so old. How old was she? She was so old. She, was so old, she, heard, she said she heard uh, Brother Rutherford live. I'm like... It's really 100 years old. But anyway, long story short, we're sitting there talking. I, her, well, he's just observing, as he does. And we were just talking. And uh, I said, well, ma'am, have, can I just read you a, a verse? She goes, okay, go ahead. I read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. I pray, God, your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless and all that stuff. And she goes, I, I've never seen that before. I said, can I show you one more? And honestly, I, I'm not... Not here to try and press it, but I, I do want to show you from the Word of God. I took her to Genesis 35 because, you know, Old Testament, New Testament, and Genesis 35, 18 says that Rachel died giving birth and her soul was in departing. Old Testament saint, Rachel. And she goes, I have never seen that before. I have never heard that before. I said, well, ma'am, you ought to go check it out for yourself and not take what any man says, not me or not anybody. Go, because you know what? They had a King James Bible for years, you know. Yeah. She was old enough to remember. Because, yeah. yeah, she's old enough. To, she's old enough to remember King James, man. But, uh, yeah, because I think the, the, the Jehovah's Witness New Testament came out in, what, 52 or 53? Then the whole Bible came out in, like, 61 or something like that. They started out with the New Testament first, then they came out with the whole, the whole thing. But that, we used to call it the Green Monster. The New World Translation was in a green we used to call it the green monster like a Fenway, but the soul for them is a big deal. They want the kingdom. That's why when they, where they meet, it's called a kingdom hall. So as we, you've heard me say before, but more importantly because you hear the Word of God teach you, is that every heresy has a thread of Bible truth in it. But typically, why we spend so much time on these mysteries, you've got to rightly divide your Bible and study, and study it like that. Because... There is a kingdom coming. There will be no more tears down the road. There will be all a new heavens and new earth. But when, you, when they hand out their, their goofy pamphlet asleep, I mean awake, and they hand it to you, or whatever the other name is, the watchtower, they always have Jesus on the back sitting in a meadow. And it's, I mean, it is just beautiful, you know? And w this, is how the, this is how it goes. Wouldn't you like, in a, like to live in a place where there's no disease, no war, no sickness? Yeah. But what happens if you die and lose your soul and go to hell? Well, we don't believe in hell. It's really Sheol or Hades or Hades or Tartar sauce, Tartarus, or whatever. They, and I'm like, really? And I'll, I'll tell you this. If you ever have, happen to go, just because you know, everybody has a phone now, it's a, a general show to you during service. But I mean, you can, you can, you can, you can, you can pull, Deb, don't leave me like that. You can, you can pull up, you can pull up the New World Translation and I challenge you to find where they put the Holy Ghost in capitals or find Holy Ghost at all. I'm dead serious. It's almost like they will not, they don't acknowledge Jesus Christ as God and they neglect the Holy Ghost. So the very first few verses is, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth and the earth without form and void and darkness upon the face of the deep. And what's the next verse say? And the Spirit, capital S, moved upon the face of the waters. Go look that up and see if that's there in a capital form or there at all. I'm serious, man. It's bizarro world. No. Go ahead. If it's not from the concordance, it's not inspired, so go ahead. So I always thought that it was considered blasphemy to change the Word of God at all. So if you're changing the King James Bible, then anything after the King James Bible is blasphemy. 
I'm resigning my position, Megan and, <laughs> Meg, Megan and uh, sorry, Estiana, you got voted out. <laughs> All right, well, get, we're, no, this is, no, this is, you're dead, go to, well, guess what, it's 25 after seven, who knew that already? Go to Deuteronomy, this is good, Megan, this is very good, actually, it's good, it's good Bible rehearsal for me, I need it, because sometimes, oh, you just think you know it all, and sometimes you do think like that, and you're like, wow, you don't know anything, and you do less. So Deuteronomy 4, uh, let's do this, Megan, I'll have you kick it off, if you could read Deuteronomy 4, 1 and 2, and you, you kind of know where I'm going, that, and that's okay, but Megan, you're 100% correct. You know what we talked about on Sunday amongst a multitude of things? <laughs> In between the slings and arrows, God was throwing at you, not me. I would never do that. But you know what we talked about is, the, is that when things are made with hands, in other words, man gets involved in it, it's corrupt. It will end up being corrupt or corrupt at the outset and all the way down through. That's why I, well, well King James wrote that Bible. Have you read it at all? There's no way you could piece together the amount of punctuation marks and verse findings and word studies. There's no way anybody could ever put this together. No way outside of God Almighty. That's why I believe it's 100% inspired. Came down on a, on, a, on a pillow, whatever the thing I was, my dream pillow, whatever that stupid thing was. That it came down and angels with wings brought and said, here it is. Brother Bert sent me a text. Uh, I allowed it. I didn't block you. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a text. That it was, was it yesterday? Five, May 2nd, 1611, that King James Bible was published. That's cool. I learned this from Dr. Rockman years ago. He, he, it just freaks everybody out because he's just, he's weird, but it's phenomenal how smart God made him through that Bible. And he was doing 111, 222, 333, and all that stuff. He said 111 is probably Caesar and 222 and all. So what's 999? And everybody's going, 999? What are you talking about? He's like, King James. Holy Bible, written in 1 plus 6 plus 1 plus 1. You could have heard a pin drop, and then everybody started freaking out and whipping Bibles and going. Because who sits around thinking about 999? And he goes, I was looking around one day, and I looked on my shelf, and I'm like, King James 9, Holy Bible 9, written in 9. It's not, you, you can't beat it, man. But anyway, let's get on to the King James Bible here. Deuteronomy 4, 1 and 2, please, if you could. Megan? Sta uh, I'm not being smart. Stat statutes. statutes. Yep. That's statutes. okay. And unto the judges, judges, which I teach you for to do them that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which right. I command you. Amen. Neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Hands off. Not yours. Deuteronomy 12, please. I know you guys know where these are. Um, Jaffer, can you get 1232, please? Deuteronomy 1232. Proverbs chapter 30, please. Proverbs chapter 30. You guys know where I'm going with this? Don't be playing with my Bible, man. But it's not my Bible, it's God's Bible. But you know what used to set that man off more than anything amongst, well, there's a lot of things used to set him off, but you know what set him off the most? You were messing with the book God gave him, and he couldn't stand it. Proverbs 30. Uh, let's do this. Kenny, get 35 and 6, please. 35 and 6. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found alive. Jeremiah 26. Here's one that's kind of tucked in. Maybe you have it, maybe you don't have it. Jeremiah 26. Let's do this. Um, Taylor, get 26 of Jeremiah 1, 2, and 3, if you could. There you go. If so be, they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way, that I may repent me of the evil which I purpose to do unto them because of the evil of their spirit. 
Imagine if you're Jeremiah and you take away from what God said to do. They can't repent and turn from the evil and God wrecks them because a guy changes the words. That's what he just said. You say everything I told you to say, don't take away from it. Because if you say everything I say, they'll hear it, they'll repent, and they'll depart from the evil, and I won't have to wipe them out. But if you take away from the Word of God and you give them the wrong message, oh yeah, man, you're in trouble. Now, I know some of the King James Bible believers are some of the nastiest, meanest, stinking, curmudgeon, rattlesnakes you ever met in your life. I know that. And as I said Sunday, and I do believe, there are people that don't know anything about the Bible issue that do have an ESV and NIV and all that, and they love God more than we do, and they serve God more faithfully than we do. Because nobody's told them or showed them or brought them and said, but the, it, you know what? It's the people that know what's going on, and they shellac it, and they varnish it, and they play with it. When God, you just saw, God said, don't play with it. Go to the, go to the last one. There's a bunch of them. I'm not going to belabor the point, but maybe we need to. Revelation 22. So you got one at the beginning, you got one at the middle, and you got one at the end. Uh, Revelation chapter 22. Common, common verses I, we, we've been through before, but maybe you guys haven't. James, can you read? Can you read? Can you read 22, 17, 18, and 19? Mm. Say, come. And let him that is at thir a thirst come. You got it. Whoever will, let him come. Let him take the water of life freely. Interesting, that's the word that Eve left out. We Of the trees in the garden, we may... She took that word out. I know people miss that, but that, that's a huge word. And at the end, the, the invitation's freely. Go ahead. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in the book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. There's not anything that I'm good at I know of myself. But honestly, this subject, I could go on forever because it means everything to me. How can you, how can you claim to be a quote-unquote Bible-believing Christian and you don't have the Bible? Yeah. If you don't know, that's different. If you have ignorance, well, when somebody shows you to repent and get the right one, praise the Lord, man. Ecclesiastes 8, verse number Four. Let's do this. Justin, can you get verse number four, please? Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? You got the word of a king in your pocket, in your lap, in your hands, hopefully in your heart, in your mind. So it comes out your yap. That's why you memorize this by the Spirit of God. You hide it in your heart, man. Part of the exercise on Wednesday night is, I, I keep saying it because I, I don't want people to get the wrong idea if they ever look at this on Wednesday night. Say, this is not to test you or shame you. It's to say, you know what? This book is real to me. He is my life. Amen. My job is not my life. I have to work a job. I have to pay bills. Okay, great. Get opportunities to witness all this stuff. But you know what the reality is? He's my life. The book is my life. Because the book tells you who to marry, who not to marry, how to have kids, who not, how, not, how to not have kids, how to, how to raise them if you have them, what job to work, where to go, what to... If you're saved, that's your manual. We all say, thy word is a lamp unto my feet, a light on my path. Is it really? Well, if it, if it is, then it's got to be everything to you so you can have the light in a dark world. Somebody's having a good time out there. Brother Bert, did you have a verse or something? Or Kenny, go ahead. Bert. Bert? Did you have... Did you have, no, I didn't know if you had a verse. Or, I have, um, going with the idols made with hands, Psalm 135, 15. Oh, yeah, uh, yes, yep. Idols that are made, made with men's hands. The, the, the work of men's hands, they have mouths, but they speak not. There you go. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. There you go. Neither is any breath in their mouths. And then I kind of, I was poking over... Psalm 111, 7, the works of his hands are uh, truth and ver verity and truth. Yeah. Yep. And all his commandments are short. You, 
I don't want man's hands on my Bible. That's why churches end up getting messed up, say people end up getting messed up, because you know, you, you introduce some Bible, but here's Baptist tradition. And here's the rules that go along with that. Do you understand if the Spirit of God can't control you, there's nothing a preacher can do about it? Not even your favorite preacher, the best message he's ever preached, the one that spoke to you, you memorize every part of it on YouTube and every part of it on the cassette tape. It does not matter unless your heart is willing and your mind is willing to put it into play and to live it. It doesn't matter. And that, that, it's the book, man, that can cut through all that. The sort of the, the, one of the reasons why I pray that on Sunday about the, the scalpel and God doing surgery, because he's the only one who can cut out and knows that mess is in your life to get it out. You're not going to trust my hands to cut it out. I'm, thank God for doctors and some nurses. But I mean, the, real, real, the real, reality, reality is, I don't, you got to trust God, man. And, and for spiritual things, man? Come on. Come on. Go ahead, Brother Burke. Second Corinthians 2.17. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, yeah. If we we're not as many. Is that the one? Yes, That's huge, man. That is huge. Go to 2.17 if you could, please. That's, this is huge, man. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, <laughs> but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God. <laughs> What's that tell you? Many people, many, they want, they want to corrupt it. Yeah, 2,000 years ago. They've been trying to change this book forever, man. You know why they hate the scripture signs without you saying a word? Because this is the only thing alive that can prick them and bother them. We street preach because we're supposed to open our mouths to the Lord, but you could stand there with that scripture sign and just watch people say something. They re- that lady that went by us, that, it is, it's, it's sad, but it, you know what it does? It just shows you how real it, it is. I'm sorry? It's just light shining. It's just that one billion candle watt light that hits you because it exposes something that, you know, nobody else knows but the Lord, man. That's uh, it's something else, man. Go over to, uh, go over to 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, please. Just some stuff coming to heart and mind here. The Word of God is absolute, the King James Bible, and that's... Megan, all kidding aside, you have more tucked away in you with that than a lot of CPO have been at it for 20, 25 years. That's a good foundation. Jesus Christ is the foundation. What he said on top of that in his book is a really, because he's magnified his word above all his name. And if anything you ask Jesus Christ of, you know what he's going to do? Well, what do you think? What, 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 what did you say? He made it, you know, it's a more sure, yeah, that's it. Mo, oh, good, good call there. A lot of struggles for the pastor at this, I'm telling you, man. A lot of battles tonight, man. Whew. The top, the top, that's it, man. 14 more years, you got this. That's it, man. That's it. That's it. I put it on the calendar. That's hilarious, that's hilarious, man. Oh, you guys are horrible. Wasn't he the one saying on Sunday that the congregation takes on the personnel? No, Brother Bert said that, and he goes, ha ha, looks at me and laughs. <laughs> Shaking, unreal, man. It's unbelievable, man. It's horrible people. Jonathan, you were right. I don't like any of you. You're right, man. <laughs> 1 Thessalonians 2.13, if you could. Um, Mrs. Cogshaw, could you read that, please? 1 Thessalonians 2.13. To this cause also, thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God. Amen. Amen. You can't stress it enough when you preach or when you teach or when you witness. I am not here representing my church or, or my thoughts or the Baptist, you know, the theology. I'm trying to represent Jesus Christ and his king, the king's book, man. And that's what you deliver to people. It's not the word of men. It's the word of God. But did you see that last part, which most folks don't like to 
quote or, or re, excuse me, don't like to remember, how does it work effectually? And, and then that what? If you don't exercise belief that that is, like I said, I'm saying, it's the inspired, infallible, perfect Word of God, there's no way you can be profitable with it. It's just the, it's just the Word of God. Uh, do you remember back in Joshua, I think it's Joshua 15, where um, Othniel, which means Lion of God, goes and takes Aixa, which means an ankle bracelet, and he takes her to wife, and the city that he took before that was Kirjath, Kirjath Sefer, I believe, which means city of the book. But after he took it over, the Lion of God, it became Debir, which means divine word. So at some point in time, that's got to stop being just a book and become the book. That's Othniel and Aixa and uh, Kirjath Sefer and Debir. It's Joshua 15. It's a great, it's a great account, man. But that's, that's real good. All right, let's go to 2 Peter because the third bishop called it out. So the third bishop S, bishop S, if you will. And the bishop S, that's it, man. <laughs> I'm glad we have women that know their Bible, man. I'm glad, we, I'm glad we got some dudes in here that actually do believe the Bible. Most churches today, all kidding aside, and you know what I mean when I say this, ladies, most churches today are women-run. They're feminine. Even the men are feminine. That doesn't mean you have to be all masochistic, Mr. T. Who mess with my gold, fool? You know, running around being an idiot. I'm, I'm just saying, man. Men, Jen, that's, that's funny. I mean, you sh men should be men, man. Stand up for your Savior, man. It's, it's sad when the women beat the men out of public witnessing and all that stuff and singing for them. I mean, get up and sing. I mean, some of you dudes need to get up and sing. Well, some, I mean, get up and sing for the Lord, man. Come on up, man. It's good. be good for you. Gene Kim will be here in a few weeks. Uh, you ladies are working on a song, I think, correct, or something of that ilk. Then the week after is the uh, uh, anniversary. Get the, get the men's quartet up here. All right, let's do this. Um, that's it, the gospel, that's it. Um, Justin, can you get 2 Peter 1? And I, I know we've been here, you could, you could probably recite it by heart. I hope you could. 16 through 21, Brother Justin, 2 Peter 1. For we have not followed accordingly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, Christ's. amen but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Amen. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were uh, with him in the mount, in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place, Amen. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, know in this verse that no prophecies, prophecy of the Scripture, is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the context there is what Peter, James, and John, or in Luke it's Peter, John, and James, just to mess everybody's world up. It's the way it is in Luke 9. But Peter's recounting the day he's up on the mount with the Lord Jesus Christ, and he gets to see, his, the, he's an eyewitness of his majesty. They're seeing the second coming, not the rapture. They're seeing the second coming because the rapture is a mystery given to the apostle Paul. We understand that. It's, uh, you know, it's after six days and about eight days. So that'd be the seventh day. Not a Bible conundrum. It's, I, I know we don't, can't count today without a phone or anything or you know, break out your abacus. But after six and about eight is seven. So on the seventh day, which would be God's calendar, he takes them on the mount and gives them a preview of the second coming. And Moses and Elijah meet with him. Those are the two witnesses from Revelation 11. And then they get to see the second coming, and they hear God the Father's voice say, this is my beloved son whom I'm well pleased. They, they heard it. I mean, there's no, there's no doubt about it. Peter goes on to say, you know what? We have a more sure word of prophecy. More sure than what? More sure than the voice of God the Father. What's he referring to? The book. 
This is more sure than if you walk out and heard a voice tonight and said, I'm God, Jehovah. If it said Yahweh, run away the other way. <laughs> I'm just saying, man. You, you, I, I had a dream last night. Does it match the Word of God? Did it come from God's Word? See, that sets people on edge. You just don't know how I feel. I don't care how you feel. And God doesn't care how you feel. He wrote down things in a book for you and I to not get over emotional about. Oh, I know that twists some of me up still because I'm mean and like that. No, that calms me down. I know you can't tell that, but that calms, <laughs> it, it calms me down. I do get fired. This stuff this excites me, man. I, I, it, it, it should make you stable knowing that I don't have to trust on my emotions, man. You know, wake up all weeping at night, Karen. Oh. <laughs> You know, we, <laughs> I'm not saying you have a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows what we go through, okay? We know that. He, yeah, he's a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. We know all that. But it's all based on what he wrote in the book, man. It's more sure word, man. And it's not just sure. It's like sure like it's, it's fastened. It's fixed. So why do people play with it? Well, number one, the devil. We know the serpent is more subtil, more subtle than a beast of the field. But the reality is he's after the word of God because whoever has the whistle controls the game. So if I can mess that book up and mess that authority up, who's the authority? Where, where, where's the button? Where's the button? Who's got the button? Who's got the whistle? Who runs the show? Who, what are you thinking? What do you say? You know, don't, you know, see, this is where I shouldn't, walk. I shouldn't go on the internet. I should be banned from the internet. Because I see these guys sit around in a bar with a Bible. I know Brother James mentioned something about it, but it is true. You go look it up. These guys have men's meetings in a bar and have Bible studies around a pitcher. And I'm not talking me as a pitcher. I'm talking a pitcher, a brew. And they'll sit down and have Bible studies because it's easy to relate with people like that. See, see what you're doing? World and church, world and church, world and church. Bring it on. Bring it on. Just, yeah, yeah, we got, we got, well, we got to relate to them. Wow, man. That's one, and I'm not going to Psalm 119. I'm not, being, I'm not being a jerk about this. Sometimes when you've gone through things and the Lord's got you through it, you do have a greater testimony because he got you through it. I don't have any problem with that at all. But I know one of the things that used to go on in AA, oh, no, not, not A, what's the, what's the one I'm thinking of that we, we do? Are you? Are, are you? Are you? Right. Kanga Roo, are you? And I'm sure it's helped a lot of people, but... <laughs> Oh, this is going to go over really well, man. <laughs> what? It, it, oh, boy. Okay, so let me think about how I want to say this, man. <laughs> well, let's just say it's probably done more harm spiritually than good because it becomes a religion. And when people get in there, what you have is one saved person telling them, telling this other person who may be newly saved or saved within the first few years, and they're pouring out their gut saying, well, I was like this, and, oh, blah, 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 blah. and the person will be going, well, how are you trying to get this thing right? And you're, so what I'm trying to say to you is this is that you have somebody in heaven who's never sinned, but yet knows everything you've gone through without sinning. Well, I have to drink to relate to somebody who drink. What? How can you have somebody in heaven that's never sinned and knows everything you've ever been through in your life, and he'll never touch sin a day in his life? And he's fully acquainted with all your griefs. But what the danger of those are, you and stuff like this, it becomes that psychobabble weird stuff. And like, no, I don't want to come down to where you are. I want to have a testimony for Jesus Christ that's not in my own self-righteousness, but I would like to be up here so I can take you and pull you up and come enjoy the walk with Jesus Christ with me. I don't have to go uh, uh, extend myself into your sin to feel what you're going through. That's, that's satanic, man. I'm sorry? Yeah, why is it the drug? Yeah, you go, you go to jail and, uh, guys, I'll be right back. There's some, uh, there's a guard. I gotta, I, I, gotta go, uh, I gotta go relate with you. Give me a minute, man. That's weird stuff, man. Yeah. But you got a Savior who's never sinned that says, yeah, man, just believe my word. Walk in the power of the Spirit of God and you'd be, you'd be amazed what I can do for you. You just don't want to, yeah, I know, man. It's, the flesh doesn't, I said it on Sunday because it's true. You don't like to be you don't like to be reproved and corrected, do you? I mean, you do if it's coming from God, but then you're like, Oof, that was a little rough, man, wasn't it? Psalm 119. We've got a couple more of these. 
I don't think Joel Olstein's doing this <laughs> on Sunday morning. Not without blinking 15,000 times. How does, what is he, a lizard? Have you ever seen that guy? <laughs> how, why do you, how do you do that, man? What are you, an iguana? I'm waiting for one eye to spin one way and the other one to go the other way. You're making fun of them, 100%. Got a congregation of 35, 40,000 people and doesn't talk anything but pop psychology garbage. And when they pan, when they pan the audience, no Bibles, they're just sitting there like, oh, he's great. You know why people don't like Bible preaching? Because they'd rather be comforted, man. And that's not you just go rip people down with preaching. That's like, come on, man. But there's got to be some striving to be more like your Savior, and good Bible preaching helps you examine yourself in light of that walk. Look at Psalm 119. Brother Kenny, I haven't heard from you in a little bit, so go 140. Psalm 119, verse 140. Thy word is very pure. <laughs> yeah, man. Therefore, thy servant loves You know why I love this book? It's very pure. I mean, not just pure. It's very pure, man. I, I remember reading this. I also heard it is that when God, uh, the Jews would go to write down part of the scripture in Hebrew, they would write a part of it, then they put it down, then they'd go wash their hands because they knew this was so clean it made them dirty. That'd be a good way to come to the Bible. Go with me to uh, John 14. A couple more and we'll, we'll shut her down. I do believe, Megan, you're 100%, I believe that Without question, the King James Bible is the absolute inspired, inerrant, perfect, preserved, and all the other things Baptists are supposed to say, but I actually really do believe it. You know what? When you, get, when you find somebody that's excited about it, you can actually tell. It's kind of like oozing out of them, man. Yes. They like to talk about it. It's like, it's exciting. It's like, uh, oh, yeah, what'd you read in your Bible today? <laughs> all weeping, man. <laughs> Roy. Roy. He was like, you guys have just a different way about you that you're so passionate and so vibrant about that. Amen. And it, it, it shows. And I was like, and then that was the door to... Yep. So. And he's there, man. <laughs> you pick up the sounds too, Kenny. Personality only, no sounds. You don't get all the sounds, man. <laughs> Yeah, Roy was talking to us. He goes, he, he was saying that. Then he, I think he said something like, "You're like Johnny Cash." I'm like, "What?" Huh? I mean, he's, he's like, "I'm like, oh, man, Johnny Cash." At Folsom, after, before, after Folsom. But we're, yeah, man, it should be real to you, not in a phony way, not all plastic, man. I can see through that stuff a mile away. The guys at jail, I'll tell you this right now. You spend any time with the guys at jail from a, a witness standpoint, or Thursday nights we did for almost 30 years, man, they'll sniff you out, man. If it's not real to you, they'll be like, he's fronting. He's fronting, man. They, they'll, they, it's either real or it's not. And sometimes God puts you in a position where you get to examine whether it is really real to you or not, but it's not going to come from anywhere but this right here. You will not be profitable without this. No way. Son, no way. Won't be profitable without being saved. And then after you're saved, you won't be profitable without that book. Doctrine, reproof, correction, instruction, righteousness. You will not be profitable for your Savior. And I'd like to be profitable. I really would. All right, um, Estiana 14. Let's do a couple things. Let's do 1415 and 1423, please. No, no, not, no. Actually, you know what? Read 25, uh, 24, excuse me, please. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine, but the, but the Father's which sent me. If you don't, I, I, would, I would urge you to memorize as much as you can through the power of the Spirit of God, but that's two verses, 14, 15, and 14, 23. If you love Jesus Christ, you'll keep his words, but to the point you made, Megan, a half a day ago, um, <laughs> How can you keep his words if you don't have them? 
How can you keep His words if you don't have them? Well, they're the same in the NIV. No, they're not. Again, if you don't know that because nobody's taught you, that's different, man. But if you're seeking for the truth, I'm telling you, God will get you a teacher. He, he will get you one. Cornelius got one. The Ethiopian you But how did the Ethiopian eunuch get one? What was he doing? I have no idea what this says, but I'm here in Jerusalem, probably a proselyte to the Ju Ju Judaic religion, Jewish uh, proselyte. And he's sitting there reading Isaiah, and then he looks and goes, who is this talking about? Can somebody, is this, is this, a pro is this some other, who is this? but he was reading the Word of God. You know why it's hard to reach people today? They're totally impervious and ignorant of the Word of God. They think it's cunningly devised fables. We know it's not. We believe it's not. I'm not I haven't followed a cunningly devised fable. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't Aesop, man. I did have one more. Go, let's do one more. Go to John 12. Go to John 12. This is... Uh, This is the capstone. 1244 says, Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. Remember a few weeks ago? You can't have the Father without the Son and the Son without the Father. It doesn't work that way. I am come a light into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. If any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not, for I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. That's the last books, uh, the books that Brother Jonathan was uh, trying to rebuke me and catch me in a trap on, but I don't forgive him. Uh, verse number 49, for I have not spoken to myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. Hasn't he not done that for us? And I know that his commandment is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Go to John 5. This is the last one. I know I'm getting freaked out right now. I'm going into the vortex of doom. John 5. John 5, verse 39 says this. Search the Scriptures. How can you search the Scriptures if you don't have them? How about Timothy on Sunday? And that from a child thou hast known the Holy, which able to make thee wise... How can you even get saved if you don't have the Scriptures, man? Now, can you get saved from a nutty idiot's version? Sure, because there's enough in there about salvation. But remember, the Bible's not about salvation. It's about what? And if you diminish the king, he's not really the king in there. I know there's somebody who wants that throne from Isaiah 14. Diminish the king's word, man. You can get saved from another, but you will not be profitable or grow without the king's word following that as much as you, as you could be. The Bible says, Search the Scriptures for in them, and you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify me, and ye will not come to me. <laughs> that ye might have life. Bye-bye, <laughs> Calvin. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. This is a great Sunday morning message. Verse 43, I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. How can ye believe or to receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuses you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. Now, check this out. For had ye believed Moses, ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. We know that from a bunch of other places. Now, look at this. But if ye believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my... What did he just put the emphasis on in there? The writings. But they go hand in hand. So whatever God wrote that's inspired and preserved and kept, his writings are more important than even words. But we know his words are in the book because it's the king's book. So I don't know if that helped or not, Megan. <laughs> Amen. I would say this. You search for everything all your life, man. I was raised Roman Catholic, serious into it, 10 years an altar boy, the whole nine. The whole deal, man. And then I had read, I had read the Bible. I, was, I read the Catholic Bible. I read Revelation because you always want to go to the end of the book and see how it turns out. Skip to the end, get to the best part, man. Only the best part's locusts and hailstones. You're like, <laughs> is this, if this is true, I am hosed. And I believed it was true. I, didn't, I knew I wasn't going to purgatory. Mom even told me I wasn't going to purgatory. <laughs> 
she's like, nope, Kern Hatton Boys home, and then you're going to hell. Yes. But, no, no. <laughs> but, you know, you start reading the Word of God, and you ask questions, and my brother Mark got saved, somebody led him to Christ, and he came home witness to the family, and then the Lord kept working on me, and Two girls in six, they were in sixth grade, I was in fifth grade. We used to walk kids home at kindergarten time. You know, they were kindergartners. See so why beep, 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 down the hill, you know? And our little, it was K, actually it was K through five. I was in fourth grade, they were in fifth grade. Shirley King and Nancy Golick. I, ne I didn't really th think about it until later on in life. And they would try to show me from the Bible how to be saved. So don't think that God's never spoken to me. You need to think hard about that. I guarantee you he's gotten the word of God to you somehow, creation, hold the truth, or somehow, but he's gotten you a witness. It's just what are you going to do with it? Yeah. Paulie, pray for us, and we're, we'll close her down for the night. Father, I just want to thank you for tonight. Even though it didn't go the way we knew we thought it was, it's good that you would have us today, Father. And I just want to thank you for your word, and that we truly do have a much sure word of prophecy that we can go through. Yeah, amen. 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 If you are going out Saturday, it will be a big crowd, so if you could get there around 6, 5, 10 after 6, maybe 10 after